At the risk of getting a little patents in doubt, Fondroy raced to the finish line to get their version of the Batman from the Matt Reeves film out there just in time. But at what cost? I do, however, want to throw out a shout out to Calkeys.com for providing the Fun Joy Batman that I'm going to be covering in this review. You guys can check out the website in the description or in the pinned comment. They got a bunch of other figures that are DC based, that are anime based. They even have some other Fun Joys available, such as the Batfleck or the upcoming Justice League version of the Batfleck that is available for pre order, as well as even some Hot Toys figures for both Marvel and DC. And I even have a bit of my own coupon code if you guys want to use it, Dark Spark. Or David to get 6% off whatever it is that you order from their site. Check them out, and I appreciate them for sending over this figure to cover in the review. A relative newcomer to the 1 9th scale, yeah, it's a really weird scaling that they kind of go for because it's not 1 10th, it's not 1 12th. They're vying for their own sort of territory. And you have Fondoy out there, a Chinese company that's trying their best to really hone in on the DC license. And I've only really covered one on the channel so far, which was the immaculate and really surprising Batfleck from Batman vs Superman. But here, we now have a new version of the Robert Pattinson, Matt Reeves, the Batman. And I was actually pretty eager for this one. And it's always a great pleasant surprise to see that they can go two for two. When it came to that bat flick, the likeness, the build, the quality of the figure, I was blown away. I thought to myself, yes, Fun Joy has definitely made a name for themselves with one figure. Let's see if they can keep that momentum up. It doesn't look like that momentum was really continued with this Fun Joy Pattinson because as I handled him, I thought to myself, I can't help but shake the feeling that they needed to meet some sort of quota and get this thing out there as soon as possible. First and foremost, you can almost already tell that I'm having a difficult time trying to get this guy to simply just stand in the most neutral of positions because you see right here that the legs are just a little off. One is a little bit more bent than the other because that was the only real way to get this guy to at least be standing in a very accurate, very neutral pose. Otherwise, the hips look off, the torso looks off, and as I handle the figure, an awful lot of squeaking and really noisy uh, kind of details kind of start to peer from the figure as I handle it more and more to the point where the more I handle the figure just in hand, kind of play around with it, mess with the articulation, mess with the quality, it kind of has this value to it that I think about and go, this feels like a really, 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 really good 3D printed figure from someone who just happens to own a very well done 3D printer that's in their house. They kind of printed out the schematics on their own and came up with the 3D printed Pattinson Batman, which you think to yourself, okay, you know, if it was someone that I know personally, someone who traditionally doesn't do collectibles, doesn't own a company, etc., this is actually not a bad Pattinson Batman as far as actually chiseling out the armor, emulating what was on screen as far as this very realistic version of the suit that's not super padded out, super gadgeted out. It looks like something that he made within the first couple of years of being Batman, very homemade, strung together with an awful lot of fabric, belt buckles, a lot of mo motorcycle gear parts, specifically the shoulder pieces. You know, they're, they're emulating that look that you've kind of seen time and time again with other manufacturers, other companies. So it's very difficult to point out like, oh, look, they got this right, they got this right. It's like, of course, you see an awful lot of the plating as far as the bits on the gauntlets with the little uh, silver detailings as well as like I said the shoulder guards that replicate that motorcycle armor feel but then you have of course an awful lot of the cushiony pa pads happening on the thighs on the knees and specifically that pattern that he's known for having on the abdomen with the angular kind of chevron look to the middle abdominal pieces right there that are kind of stitched together leading to the chest plate with with of course the batarang knife that he can actually remove from there and then of course the cowl that is actually stitched all together in one piece to make it look like something that he was able to make his own and so it's doing a good job of just kind of transcending that feel of oh yeah this is pants and batman you're definitely got the look down but as far as the feel down with a one ninth scale figure, like I said, the quality of the plastic, moving things about, it just feels like something that was easily 3D printed from someone at home or something like that, like someone next door. And from a company like Fonjoy that was able to really execute and kind of show us what the bar means to them with that bat flick, 
I can't help but feel just a little disappointed. Though to be fair, I feel like from the outside, this is probably one of the more accurate looking capes. From the outside, I'm being very, very specific here. Just the outside part. Once you look at the inside is where it's okay. They're just kind of duplicating the, the texture look of the outside of the cape that kind of has like this nylon effect, which we saw in the movie kind of has that similar look in the movie from the outside, but from the inside looks a little bit more clothy, a little bit more rigorous. Here, however, it doesn't look all that much different. It just looks like they kind of pleated and stitched the outsides and just called it a day. So otherwise, you're getting the same pattern, the same feel from the inside. So it's almost like a halfway there sort of cape. And in terms of, again, quality and actually feeling the the cape in hand it's just kind of whatever so you know it's not the most terrible cape i've ever felt but at the same time i've seen not only fond joy but other companies do a little bit better specifically with the wiring that you have on the outer rims of the cape itself which technically are there to kind of give it a little bit of possibility to be able to manage the cape and get it to be flushed with the shoulders to give them a slightly more accurate look but once you actually get the feel of the wiring doesn't feel all that great. It's kind of weak. It kind of st stays in position, but it's very easy to get it out of position should you nudge it with your fingers or kind of nudge it by accident. I don't know. There's just something about it that doesn't feel all that great in hand. And even though, like I said, it kind of does the job as far as flexing around the shoulder guard to give them that much more accurate look, it doesn't really do too much to distract away from the really elongated color piece. Is it just me, or this collar is protruding just a little too high up here from behind his neck? I feel like that just stands out to me a little egregious. And it doesn't do that much of a job of distracting me from the giant elephant in the room here, which is the very severe lack of likeness to Pattinson. Which is, again, where that disappointment kind of takes even a further noise, no, nosedive downwards, because... We've had Fonjoy show us what they can do with likenesses, specifically with that Batflick that is straight up Ben Affleck in the cow, like a little mini Ben Affleck. I was, I couldn't stop looking at that guy. So with this guy, I'm looking at the likeness and I'm like, I don't know about you guys, but despite really nailing the eyes and kind of sinking in the detail of the eyes and making sure that the sculpt is actually really well done as far as the texture, as far as the stitching of putting together the cowl and making sure that it's very slim and tight around the head, and objectively, the chin piece, or rather the mouthpiece, has a decent amount of protrusion, if you even want to call it that, to kind of, again, evoke a little bit of that feeling from a much more nuanced Batman that we got in the Matt Reeves movie. Yeah, that ain't Pattinson. I'm sorry, it just does not look like Pattinson. If anything, it looks like the stunt double that was photographed when he was riding the bike from those early pictures on set from the movie back in, I think it was like, early 2021 or something like that when those photos were first released looks like that guy rather than Pattinson himself and we've seen other figures of this scale or even smaller being able to give us slightly more accurate representations of Pattinson that sure may kind of tread on the cartoony caricature side but I still get this feeling this tone this this I can't really explain it but I look at the head sculpt and I go that is Pattinson I don't get that here. It's objectively a good head sculpt that looks pretty menacing, that pr looks pretty enticing, and kind of has a breath of life behind it, but I don't see the actor whatsoever. And you see how, just how much I'm kind of struggling to get the figure to even just stand and stay put without, again, looking awkward because it just looks like one leg is kind of veering off here. The torso is kind of in this slumpy sort of way, like he's kind of pelvic thrusting slightly. He it, it never, it never looks natural. He always looks awkward. He's like one of those people that just does awkward things out, and you're just like, why can't you just be... Stop being weird. <laughs> and I, I, out of all the companies that I was least expecting to pull off something like this, I never expected Fonjoy to be delivering on the awkwardness. And frankly, it doesn't really get any better once you try to put him in some more dynamic poses due to the articulation, which I was expecting to at least alleviate some of my concerns. But frankly, things just kind of got worse from there. The head is actually... Okay, you know what? Let's just cut to the chase. Look at this. The ball joints of the ankles, despite allowing rotation 360 degrees when you can, as well as slight pivoting upwards and downwards, both are just so loose. It's not just one. It's both of them. One is loose on the bottom peg. The other is loose on the top peg. You see that the bigger peg right there is coming off and you can blatantly see it. I can't tell if maybe the cuffs of the boots themselves are sculpted or molded just too low. That it's not allowing too much clearance for the foot to stay on or... 
if simply just the pegs were sculpted or molded too small. But it's not one, it's both that are just coming apart every time I simply just nudge the ankle joints slightly just to get them to be floored a little bit better when it comes to positioning or simply just to bend the toesies which don't even bend all that much higher than that. So yeah, I'm cutting a little bit ahead here, but that's probably problem number one is that these feet are never staying on despite what I try to do here. So I have the reverse problem of what I've been having recently with certain reviews that I've been covering, whether it be the figure arts, spider punk, where maybe some of the joints were just a little too tight and they ended up breaking, or I had to loosen them up with hot air or boiling water. Here it's the opposite. I need these things to kind of tighten up a little bit because, oh my God. Anyways. If you ever look past that, the rest of the articulation is pretty modest, even though I would have liked it to have had a joint at the base of the head, top of the neck, as opposed to it being all one giant piece. Because yes, the articulation for the head is actually at the base of the neck, not at the top of the head. So you actually have to move the entirety of the neck and head joint piece Oh my god, you see that right there? <laughs> you see that? Yeah, even the mouth plate. Spoilers, the mouth plate comes off, but that comes off way too easily. Again, the entirety of this thing is just screaming like rush job. I just feel like this thing was just rushed to market. I don't know if there was a deadline or something by Fonjoy or investors over there in China, but man, I've got a bad feeling about this, guys. But when the mouth plate is not coming off very easily, you can technically bend the head downwards and upwards a pretty modest amount and slightly tilt side to side. But rotation is very little. You can kind of nudge it side to side, but you can see that the entirety of the collar piece is just kind of grabbing and holding on to it for dear life when trying to get the neck joint to turn in any kind of direction. And again, the mouth plate just keeps falling off this this thing is a goddamn disaster so frankly they gave Pattinson the Keaton treatment and I frankly don't understand why I mean I get it maybe they were trying to go for some form of realism with the cowl to make it all one piece and look as accurate as possible but the trade-off you don't get articulation with the head and we've seen some of the companies that were able to at least blend some of that articulation better and still give us head articulation that allows it to fully rotate 360 so Fondoy, I'm sorry, but the blueprint is in fact out there. You could have just replicated that. If I'm not mistaken, the bat flick was able to turn his head. So I don't understand why they went with this design. And then when you get to the arms, at least we have a little bit of a remedy to allow it to fully rotate 360, although it's a little bit tight and at an angle. You can technically extend, but only about that far out before the shoulder guard comes into contact with the rest of the collar and the cape that's stitched here at the top. And some slight butterfly movement, but it you can only nudge it so far, flexing forwards and backwards right where you see right there. Now, thankfully, the shoulder guard is attached to the bicep, so that allows a little bit of swiveling on said bicep, but not a full 360 rotation like you've seen with other figures. You technically have two joints at the elbow, but because of the way that all the panels and the plastic is molded, he can only really kind of bend about that far up before it stops dead in its tracks. Thankfully, though, out of all the joints on the damn thing, it's actually the wrist joints that feel really good in hand or rather flexible, allow the hand to rotate 360 as well as bend inwards and upwards as far as that. And like I said, it feels very fluid in hand, so really comfortable to move. But then we're back to the drawing board when it comes to the mid-torso because... Even though it's able to rotate 360 degrees there at the top and being able to crunch very generously towards the front, side to side is a little bit more limited, not too bad, and some slight extension towards the back. But just be careful not to do it too much because when you get to the waist, there's some slight nudging side to side and extension towards the back. But when you do... Jesus Christ! Yeah, again, I don't know if maybe there was some sort of adhesive that's supposed to be there, or maybe measurements were not taken accurately, but it comes off the ball joint very easily. Pops back on just as easily, I will give them that, but at the same time, that's not something that I should be struggling with every single time that I even want to give a slight amount of push towards this waist joint right here. I don't know if maybe the belt was sculpted too tightly or again, there were some mismeasurements when it came to the blueprinting of this thing that nobody really paid too much attention to. And then we get to those troublesome legs that look a little askew from one another. 
They can technically extend towards the sides, but at a bit of an angle because of the way that this overall crotch area is sculpted. So they go only about that far, at least with the left one. The right one's a little bit more problematic. I don't know if it has to do with the way that the belt has these extra pieces and accessories kind of sticking out. But I just noticed that this one just kind of stops right about right there. And I don't want to give it any more force because it's giving me resistance. And I fear that's going to break or snap off just like the other goddamn pieces really do. Extension towards the back is, again, modest on the left one, but the right one is, I don't know, maybe it's because of the way that this is all sculpted here towards the back that is just creating more force towards the front. I don't know. I really don't know. But it just looks like one is favored over the other. And extension towards the sides, kind of a similar case where this one feels like it can go a little further, but only by a couple of degrees than the one on the right. And being that they're drop-down joints, when you kind of put them back into position, you'll notice that you have this major amount of gappage happening there between the crotch piece and the top of the legs. So just make sure to pop them back into place right there. And thus, create a little bit of swiveling, but they can only nudge in any kind of direction. So don't really count that as any form of swiveling. Much like the wrist joints, the knee joints feel very good in hand to flex on both of those joints to be able to bend the foot upwards about that far. But... The honeymoon phase can only stick around for so long before you get to those ankle joints that I've already covered. So we don't really need to go through that again. Uh, I, just, I don't know. There's just something just very haphazard feeling about the way everything is just built and assembled together and constructed and sculpted and even painted. Let me illustrate to you guys what I mean by jumping into the accessories. And I'm telling you guys, see, in this neutral position, kind of stri looking straight forward... He actually looks pretty decent. He just doesn't really look like pants and all that much, but it looks like a pretty modest and decent figure. It's just once you kind of start finagling with the articulation and the quality of the plastic, I'm kind of start to raise some eyebrows, but I digress. Going into accessories, you typically expect alternate hands. Fun Joy is no different, except they're not going to go to the extremities of other companies like Mayfix or Figure Arts, since you're only paying about a third of the price, which is where I'm able to at least feel a little alleviated by the trade-off because with those competitors you're dealing with 80 90 maybe even 100 110 dollar figures here if you're dealing with the hong kong dollar to the u.s dollar conversion you're more so dealing within the 30 to 40 maybe 50 dollar range depending on shipping and for that you get of course the figure you get the default fisted hands that he comes with out of the box but then you get four additional hands two of which are these semi open kind of semi-reaching out clenched hands, uh, they look a little bit more on the relaxed side, but still, they can be swapped out for either one of the fisted hands that he has on person. And then two extra hands, one is a trigger hand, and the other one is a cylindrically shaped grappling or grabbing hand. These hands can then be used with a couple of accessories that you've already seen on him before with other versions of the character or versions of this figure whether it be the clasped uh, batarang that comes out of his chest that he uses as a knife to break into the crime scene so it's kind of folded into itself you got the torch lamp right there deployed with the little white section on it and then you have the exposed grappler from the side of his gauntlet right about right there the accessory that you can fit on his one of his gauntlets right there and I took the liberty of sporting the grapple hook gun or the sticky bomb gun, whatever you decide to call it, because I feel like it's been going by different names, on the actual holster that's on his thigh that's really well decently sculpted and painted in and actually holds the gun in place per pretty firmly. And here's the thing, the assortment of accessories that you at least see before you're here from the onset is a pretty decent assortment. The hands are really well sculpted. They're very accurate, whether it be the right hand being pretty smooth on the top of the hand, but then you have the left hand that has that little contraption. I don't know what it's called, but his left hand always has like that square that's kind of protruding out for some reason. And the effectiveness of swapping out some of the certain pieces that you get on him to be able to then dress him up in a variety of ways is a pretty straightforward process. Being able to swap out the hands is pretty seamless. It doesn't feel like I'm about to break any of the joints. Ace figure art. I'm sorry, but I'm kind of calling you out. I'm really scared whenever I swap out hands for any figure arts figure, whether it be Batman, Spider-Man, or anybody in between. I feel like they make those joints just way too thin and narrow that I always feel like I'm going to break one of them whenever I swap out the hands. So with Fun Joy, they made the process a little bit less uh, intrusive, a little less 
dangerous, so to speak. And then the same could be said about the grappler right here that kind of extends out of his forearm because on the side, he didn't come with it, but again, I went and took the liberty for posterity to apply it to his gauntlet here on the right. He comes with the panel or the little plate that is designed to look like the grappler collapse into itself so it's sculpted pretty decently like I said just like the extended one except this one that's extended is also made out of this like rubberized plastic so it can kind of flex and bend and at first I wasn't sure if I was a huge fan of that because it felt a little on the cheap side but once I fit the tab into his gauntlet and kind of flexed it to the grabbing hand it, it, I, it then dawned on me, I'm just going to leave it alone for now, but it dawned on me that if anything, this kind of does a pretty good job of making sure that you don't risk breaking the extended grappler because now you can kind of mold it and fit it into the trigger hand so that then it feels a bit more natural to the way that the hand is either turned or bent depending on the way that the joint is oriented. So I did appreciate that. Same thing with the way that the grapple hook gun or sticky bomb gun fits into his trigger hand very naturally into his palm. And then of course you have either the torch light that can go on his grabbing hand, his cylindrical grippling, gripping grabbing hand, or the batarang that fits very naturally and very smoothly into said hand. Though I do not appreciate that both the gripping hand and the trigger hand are only on the right. And I get it, it's screen accurate, he was a right hand, but it's an action figure. Give us both, left and right, because this ends up being a little bit limiting when it comes to posability and replayability. Now, granted, you could argue that this kind of ruins the illusion because he already has the battering on his chest. Well, that's because Fonjoy also opted to throw in the empty chest piece to be able to recreate that illusion. And swapping said piece is also a very straightforward process. Just kind of dig in here, pull it out of its sockets here via the pegs and the little tab, and simply just fit in the other one. And while you have this open, you can also take a look and see how the process was done to hold in the cape, which is actually stitched in and glued in there rather nicely. So there's no real risk of pulling. The only thing that will nitpick is that when fitting in either chest piece, it never feels like it's staying. It stays in there, but it always does like this squeaking noise whenever you press it. So again, it kind of lends a little bit to that cheap kind of feel. And while we're on the subject of slotting certain things in, as we've already kind of noted during the head articulation portion, the mouth plate does come off, the default stoic mouth plate, and you can swap it in for a grimace face to make him look just a little bit more on the aggressive side, which frankly, uh, from a distance, just like with the likeness of Pattinson himself, it looks okay from a distance from strictly a distance because once you get a little up close you can see the ugliness of the teeth the puffiness of the cheeks a little bit of the chinks in the bat armor are showcased there with the grimace face that looks a little cringy but at least like i said from a distance once you get him into a certain pose making it look like he's maybe throwing a punch or grappling up into the air it kind of sells the illusion but again going back to how finagly and weird the articulation feels it just kind of blends in with that QA kind of situation that I was dealing with this figure. And if that wasn't bad enough, we then get into the ugly side of all of these accessories, which I was kind of segueing into, which has to be some of those pain applications. Thankfully, the grapplers as well as the gun are kind of saved from this complaint, but it's really the torch lamp, the extra battering, and even the chest piece that I just removed that are probably the biggest culprits when it comes to like certain paint applications, certain details that just look like it was painted by someone that was literally on the assembly line, but they're not known to be a huge professional painter. It doesn't feel like they've been doing this for years, not like someone from... Uh, hot toys even though the, of course they're more on the prestigious side and I know that some of you are probably rolling your eyes right now but I mean I would rather trust a machine to deal with something like this because if you take a really close look at the torch lamp right here you'll see that you have that really gold accent there at the tip that just kind of warps and kind of ebbs and flows up and down as you rotate the entire item around and then the same thing for the battering as well as the chest symbol. You'll notice you have these yellow accents at the top that are meant to be somewhat screen accurate to the way that he looked like in the movie, or at least the way that these items look like in the movie. And you'll notice that they're painted just a little off. You'll notice that one is just a few, like a fraction of a millimeter off than the other. And I know that, again, from a distance, some of you may not notice, but 
I, I'm just going to say it. I've seen some people online lambast McFarlane for something like this. But when companies like Fonjoy or whatnot with figures that are just uh, on the up and up come out with something like this, they're like, well, they're just starting out. They're just, c come on, guys. We, we can't really be playing that card right now. Especially since we're technically dealing with something that is, even if it's not like miles above, it's still technically a little bit more expensive than your average McFarlane. So when you're paying for that little bit of extra price, you at least expect it to be just a bit more refined on the paint application. So to see something like on the chest piece right here, well, you'll notice that you have someone that looks like they f***ed their eyebrows while trying to pluck them, and that's pretty much the approach they took with these yellow accents. I'm sorry, but it's very, very noticeable. But not as noticeable as the alternate Robert Pattinson unmasked head. Jesus Christ, look at this. <laughs> I'm sorry, but look at this. If my complaining about the yellow accents being painted on weird wasn't enough, just look at those Pennywise eyes that they put on my man Robert Pattinson. Assuming we can even call him Robert Pattinson, because again, the likeness is completely lost, the eyes are off in different directions. Sure, they did a decent job with the eye makeup smudging there at the bottom of his eyes, but again, an awful lot of the likeness is lost. The eyebrows also look like they're a little bit off, a little too raised up and too sharp to look natural. They did a decent job with the sculpting of the hair, but there's like these weird glossy brushes there. I don't know if that's a QC problem or if that's just like the oil that came out of manufacturing. I don't know, but every time I try to smudge it, I've seen McFarlane figures have a little bit of that like glossy oil, but then you can kind of rub it off and it disappears. Here, it doesn't seem like it's doing that. So it's a little bit uh, of an eyesore considering how much of a matted finish this hair really is. And if that wasn't unpleasant enough to add insult to injury, swapping this thing is a bit of a bitch because much like his original head sculpt here, it's all one piece as you can deduce right there. No head swivel of any kind at the bottom of the head or the top of the neck. So fitting it onto that joint, probably because it's not the default head, but putting it on, it never feels tight and never feels snug. I can barely hear a pop. And getting it to rotate and actually flex within the limited articulation he already had. On top of it, just looking straight up ugly and even have... Hold on, what the... Yeah. During the making of this video, I'm just now noticing he also has a little bit of a chip just sliced off his nose. I don't know where that happened. Because I barely displayed it and it's barely fallen with this head on. Barely even touched it. Okay, yeah. So like I said, this thing is just atrocious that it pretty much makes it clear that I'm going to be sporting the cowled head. Likeness or not, it's at least doing a much more serviceable job of delivering the illusion of the Batman. And then of course they try to sweeten up the deal by throwing in the base, which I will say it's pretty quality as far as the robustness of the base itself with the Batman logo there, the Batman nameplate, even though the lettering is just a little off when it comes to lining it up accurately to the front of the plate there. But at least the arm has, again, that spring-loaded mechanism on the grabbing part here towards the top. And the ratchetiness is very, very, very tight and kind of sticks in place. So in terms of putting it in a variety of poses, making sure that he looks like he's kind of flying from the air or grappling or anything like that, it's really doable. Even though, again, he's missing the wingsuit, he's missing a couple of other things... And granted, for the price point, they hit all the basic check marks of accessories they toss in. And that's okay. I'm willing to kind of overlook that if they have at least delivered on what I was showering that original Ben Affleck BVS Batman praise with. Which was the head sculpt, which was the texturing behind the body, which was those to those little details that really made me go, yo, Fun Joy is the next one to look out for, only to see that they suffered a bit of a sophomore slump with their patents and Batman. And to really drive the point across, it's time to take a look at that competition that I kept foreshadowing throughout this video. Okay, seriously, I've got a goddamn problem. <laughs> Look at this. This is legitimately starting to get ridiculous to the point where, I gotta be honest, guys, I think really this is gonna be my last comparison for the Pattinson. And I know there's a Beast Kingdom on the way, but I feel like that scale is just so blown out even further more than this here, Fonjoy, that frankly, I think maybe that'll just be its own review. No comparisons needed. No more to dig this shit up all over again. Hopefully, this will be our climactic reach as to which is the best Robert Pattinson, the Batman figure. 
And in that quest, I'm going to approach this more so from a ranking. I'm not going to go through like, well, if you look at this figure, it compares to this and it compares to that. It compares so many different permutations that we can go across here that it's just going to be taking up too much time. We're going to be here all day. So let's try to approach this from a ranking level amongst these five major competitors, major names, and granted at different price points, but these are effectively the names that come to people's minds when it comes to figures, quality figures that you would want to recommend or put out there when it comes to what would be a good Robert Pattinson figure. So we got the Mesco, McFarlane, Mafex, Figure Arts, and now Fonjoy. And I might be starting off with some expectation subversion but despite so much nitpicking and shit talking that I was kind of doing about the Funjoy, I'm still going to take it over that figure arts. Yes, I will say this is better than the figure arts. Even though, to the credit of the SH figure arts, it's got more of a cohesive feel to the quality of the plastic as far as the joints, as far as the paint applications. It felt, it felt like everybody who put and assembled the figure arts was in the same room together. And therefore, it never feels like whenever I move some of the joints or I move parts of the body, it never feels like it's going to fall off or it's too sticky or it was kind of rushed out. But there were still so many questionable decisions put out there as they kind of put that figure out for wide release as far as the glossiness of the head sculpt, that giant cape piece covering up all of his shoulders, the scaling, the proportion of the limbs, and also the slight inaccuracy to the color scheming of the suit. There's just something about the Fun Joy that it's at least able to give off the soul of the pants in Batman much better than the figure arts still, especially for the amount of money that you're forking over. Keep in mind that with the Fun Joy, after you make over the conversion, factoring the taxes and the shipping, since you have to import this thing, you're looking at about somewhere between 45 to 50 bucks as opposed to the figure arts, which even if you buy it from goddamn Amazon, you're still looking at a hefty 80 to 90 bucks. That, and that's if you're not finding it on sale. Granted, there are some sales. There's been some reoccurring sales from sites like Bitback Toy Store, maybe Entertainment Earth, but BBTS is the one that I've seen it go for practically almost half off. And even then, or like 40, 45% off. And even then, it's still 55 bucks. At that price level, you might as well wait a couple of weeks, get yourself the fun joy. And even if you're losing on a little bit of the likeness, you're getting a much better representation that's going to look a little bit more modest up on the shelf especially if you take into consideration some of these like neutral poses like with him and the, these fists up there's been a couple of areas where putting him up with the base with the arm extended upwards and making it look like he's grappling frankly i'm getting the feels from those scenes in the batman much better with the fun joy than with the figure arts however that's kind of where he stops at in terms of positioning so in last fifth place is the figure arts and spoiler alert, the fourth place is taken up by the Fonjoy because in third place is in fact that Mesco because the likeness to Pattinson can still be found on the head sculpt despite how slightly oversized and... Uh, how do I put this delicately? <laughs> Let's just say in terms of proportioning, he looks a little like he's got a bit of a short complex you know he looks like short king wolverine from deadpool and wolverine so compared to these other guys right here but at least you got some really good stitching with the overall cloth suit that they masked over the or the body sculpt even though that came at the cost of limiting the articulation but on top of that you got the orange accents around the boots little details and paint applications that look very accurate i like the brush metal across the chest piece and the cape looks a little bit more accurate to that that you got in the movie you got the wingsuit you got so many different accessories and to be honest despite not getting the full most satisfying first impression out of Mesco it's at least giving me the idea that I at least know where that $110 went to it's not lost on me you know I, I don't look at myself and go why are they charging so much no I can kind of see it it's just on a subject that level wasn't vying for me to it, or moving me enough in the direction of picking up yet another Mesco. But I, I understood it. I'm still not understanding how this is Fonjoy's second outing, or at least for me, my second outing, after following 
the really awesome bat flick. So wouldn't you guess it, we're left with our last two usual suspects, McFarlane and Mafex, and I feel like you can pretty much guess where we're going from here. In second place, it's going to be the McFarlane because of the value proposition. You're getting a figure that is traditionally somewhere between $20 to $23, and I know that I'm technically cheating a little bit because this is technically officially the version from the Ultimate Movie 6 pack, the one that came with the cloth cape. Technically no accessories whatsoever, but he comes with both fisted hands to give him a much more neutral pose. And I will confess that it may not be the most accurate looking Batman as far as the color scheming, but the likeness is still there on the cowl. The way that the cape cl cloth cape is able to kind of warp around the shoulders to kind of Again, resemble that look despite the cloth looking nowhere near as close as accurate to the way that these other capes look like. But again, it's that value proposition. Knowing that you can, this is the type of figure that you could just pick up at the store, pick up at you know a brick and mortar store like Target. Even if we were to take into consideration the original version, it's at least doing a modest job of giving you really good articulation, really good scaling with other DC Multiverse figures so that it kind of has this presence up on the shelf. And if you were some of the lucky ones that were able to get the Ultimate Movie 6-pack version, I'm sorry, but I feel like I'm getting much more replay replayability with the McFarlane than any of the others. Which means that still at number one and still the reoccurring, retaining, heavyweight, world champion... It's the Mafex. I'm sorry, but this is where I think about the $120, I think he was, $120, $125 that I spent on him, and I still think to myself, worth it. After almost a year, it's still worth it in terms of the articulation, how great the quality of the plastic still feels. Even if it's not maybe the strongest likeness to the face, it's at least miles better than that of the figure arts. It's probably on the par with the Mesco and the in the McFarland, but at least when it comes to the texturing of the cape, the strength of the wires in the cape to put it in a variety of poses, and then being able to have this replayability not just with the articulation and the possibility, but also with the assortment of accessories that Mafex is known for throwing in. And again, the quality of of the positioning, being able to swap I, I still find myself even when I'm not shooting or at least I'm in the process of shooting some of the B-roll that you probably watched within this review. I still find myself in moments of just playing with the Mafex, even though I'm not setting up a shot. And that, to me, is probably the limitless test as to why it is that Mafex still reigns supreme within these five in the ultimate, or at least the semi-ultimate, Robert Pattinson the Batman ranking. And that is why I'll be giving the Fon Joy a pretty somber and slightly disappointing 5 out of 10. Hey, look at that. Even the number mimics that of the ranking that he ended up on. And who's to say that we'll have others to kind of join the fray? I really hope that this is really it. And I understand that earlier I did foreshadow at that Beast Kingdom, but I feel like we're jumping so far far high up with the scaling of that guy. I think he goes for like, what, 1 8th, 1 7th, 1 8th. He's significantly taller to the point where I feel like that's just going to be his own review but then again, never say never. So only time will tell. I don't think it's going to be releasing for some time, probably well into the early months of 2025. So there's plenty of time for me to maybe switch my tune and dig these guys back up out of storage and deliver yet another ultimate Robert Pattinson Batman. And I don't know. I don't know where things are going to go from there. Maybe I'll throw in the hot toys. Maybe I'll throw in the in art. And then I'll piss everybody off. If you are nevertheless still moved to pick up your own unit of the Fon Joy Robert Pattinson Batman, once again, check out cowkeys.com. They got it available in stock, ready to ship. And they even have some product pages for some other Fon Joys that are either in stock from the DC Multiverse or from some upcoming stuff that, are, that is available for pre-order, such as the Justice League or Zack Snyder Justice League Batflick that is going to be coming out in the next couple of months or so. So you're welcome to be able to pre-order that, as well as a variety of other things. They even got some hot toys themselves, so check them out, cowkeys.com. Link in the description, as well as in the pinned comment. And you guys even have a coupon code, Dark Spider David, to get 6% off your order. Nevertheless, though, I appreciate it again, my ranking. I, I digress. As I was saying, I want to thank and appreciate the executive producers over at the level 2 tier that are supporting the content and the channel, Tom Bowling. And as always, stay humble. I'll catch you guys on the next Robert Pattinson ranking. God help me.